Hi there, welcome to uh, video number eight in the sequence of looking at a new approach to uh, programming uh, aircraft, particularly the, uh, well, starting with the uh, Cessna 152, uh, making better use of templates, making more use of the new Microsoft input events uh, where they're applicable. So if we get into the cockpit straight away and have a look at uh, what's going on here. Um, so this one's all about the cockpit, really. In the previous um, videos, we've done templates for the radio stack, for the transponder, for the ADF, um, for using the honeycomb uh, yoke and throttle quadrant. So this one here, we're going to look at uh, what's specific to um, the Cessna, the 152. We'll make it a template still, because it might be that we want to uh, apply this to another aircraft or use it as a, a starting point for something else we're going to develop. Let's bring in the camera into the top right. So you can see it's the X-Touch. And again, most of the stuff is going to be based on the X-Touch. Um, so really, we need to go through the cockpit and, and decide which elements we're going to try to emulate. We can't do everything. We, uh, we're beginning to run out of rotaries. Uh, so we have to be a bit more selective. Now, uh, this one here, the Attitude Indicator Calibrator, I've never really used it, so I'm going to... Uh, leave that one out for the moment. Um, I might come back to it as my flying develops. But this one here, obviously, we do use uh, frequently. The um, pressure settings here are important to us. So if I bring in axes and O, let's uh, drag that across from my other screen. Our normal process would be to uh, watch the simulator events, so we would ignore the spam and clear the list, and then just watch what happens when we turn this. There is um, one of these new input events for it, but I'm not really that keen on getting into the maths behind it of how what the calibration is. Also, it's in the hectopascals. Um, and most of Microsoft the flight simulator seems to work in um, the American units, the uh, inches of mercury. So I'm going to continue using the um, legacy inputs that I've been using for ages. It takes a while, um, or it takes a bit of knowledge to find this one. And it's actually called the Colesman, this in instrument. So if we do a search, we got the Colesman decrease. So we can just double click on that. And I'm gonna allocate it to this uh, button, this rotary here. So turn left on that, click on add, and that works. And we'll do the in increase for there as well. So again, the Colesman increasing. And that should be relatively reliable, we would hope, so the barometer gets set that way. Click add. And we'll just check that it's working. Okay, so the next one across, um, in fact, these two working in tandem, these are the OBS, or in fact, the OBI, the indicator, um, Omni Bearing, I believe it was. I haven't uh, used the full name for a long while. Um, I want to control it from this single rotary, so I want to have a toggle switch on top of here, which allows me to choose whether I'm going to be adjusting this setting or this setting here. Before I dig into that, uh, on the face of it, it should be simple. That if I was just allocating one thing to it without the toggle bit, if I um, do a search for the OBS or OBI, it comes out to the same thing. There isn't an input event for this. I don't know why this has not appeared as an input event. So we are going to be using some of the legacy um, functions that are here. And on the face of it, it looks really easy. The, we've got an OBI decrease, an OBI increase. And let's just put the, the decrease one in. So we double click on that and allocate that. Add. When you first start using it, it looks quite reasonable. It's moving with one degree uh, each time you, you, you click happens on here. But it's become unstable, for me at least, uh, since the last update, that midway through a flight, you'll start turning this and it leaps in five degrees or 10 degrees. Um, 
if we go back and have a look at what uh, is set here it doesn't say anything at all in the um, sorry, here it doesn't see anything here about speed changes there are some that have got um, if you if you turn turn it to um, slowly take a, or like a long click kind of thing it does strange things so there's something weird going on here um, and equally I used to use this one here the fast decrease and that's allocated now the fast decrease um, to find that stopped working completely you can see that it's being registered here that we are moving it but it should be moving in 10 degree jumps and it's not so there's something in behind has, has, has changed here and I'm finding it very unreliable so we were gonna have to write some script anyway so that I can do this toggling um, so we'd have to write sort of a, a, a lower level um, function um, sort of script so let's uh, clear that out and we're going to look in some scripting so the first thing we're going to need is we are going to need to have a toggle uh, connected to this switch here so when I press that button it will toggle between the two so I'm going to need a, a script group to put it in I have got a 152 group but that's the, an old um, setup that I had and that's what I'm trying to improve upon so I'm not going to use that one I, I'm using the 01 livery for my development work so I'm going to create uh, my uh, C152 and it's the 01 version what I do is I work on that livery and when I'm happy with it I can then transfer that and, uh, to all the other versions of the 152 so we're going to add that in and we'll see here I've got a new group especially for this so that's where this is going to go now the toggle for the OBS is dead easy we just give it a name so OBS toggle is fairly obvious we're going to need our own variable to keep track of which um, which one we're we're working with so it's a local variable and my OBS would seem like a really sensible one to go with we'll copy that and paste it in again because what we want, what we want it to do is to take the value that's in here which is zero by default and invert it in a binary fashion from 0 to 1 when every time I press that button and write it in or if it's 1 invert it to 0 so it swaps it between 0 and 1 it just toggles the two so we can save that straight away so that's the easy one what I want to do now is to write uh, a script that will do something to uh, this uh, OBS here if it's zero and if it's one do it to this one so we need to compare the value with zero and if it's zero so if it's equal to zero do whatever's in those brackets else do whatever's in those brackets so normally I would have just uh, put in there the ink um, if this was the OBS decrease I would have put the decrease uh, function in there for VOR1 and the decrease val um, event for VOR2 in here but because it's become unreliable I'm gonna have to write a bit more of a script so what I'm gonna need to do is to look at the value um, of um, where the point the pointer is at the moment and then um, take either add or take away from it depending on whether it's an increase or a decrease so I'm going to need to look for that variable so look for the OBS variable and this one here says it's the nab OBS in degrees with an index of one or two which looks like what I want so OBS one 
in degrees to be red and if it's a decrease I want it to uh, want it to subtract one from it so we have one subtract and I want to write it back in so we're looking for the sim event that allows us to write that new value back in which is the OB uh, the VOR1 set now let's put an extra one in here that I'll need to take out okay so let's read through it again read the value of OBS1 in degrees and sub, uh, there's one subtracted from it and write it back in so the um, else version is going to be the VOR2 version so we can copy that much in now I can't copy the brackets at the same time it is, uh, doesn't let me do that so I'm going to copy that put the brackets and now I'm going to put that in and of course this will be 2 and this here will be 2 and we'll save that as new so what I want to do is to test this now so I'm going to allocate the toggle switch to start with so let's narrow this down and this is my toggle allocated to this button here click add and the decrease I haven't written the increase yet but we'll just do the decrease for the moment Here's my decrease version and that's allocated to that one being turned and we will click add so I'm just going to turn this to the right and then we shall try the decrease so the decrease is working on that one and here's where the wrinkle is it won't go below zero I can't go back past there let's go back and look at the script for that what happens here is if it gets to zero and tries to take one of it it won't do that it won't uh, go to um, it won't go below zero it won't go to a negative number so we're going to have to do a little bit more work on this one here before we get to that bit there so it's still if it's in um, talking to that VOR we want to do something if it's zero so we've got to add a little bit more script at the beginning so let's sort of space it out a little bit first thing we need to do is to test whether it's at zero so we need to check that variable again well be first and check that it's zero if it is zero then we'll do something about it so if it's zero what we're going to do just copying that variable that uh, event in there if it's zero what we're going to do is actually turn it into three five nine three five nine and set that in here if it's not zero we'll do that to it I'm going to do the same kind of thing here for uh, now two. 
So this else here is related to that test there, whether it's zero or not. This else here is related to, are we talking to VOR1 or VOR2? I hope this is making sense. So we can copy all that. Drop that in there. And this is all version two. one too many brackets on the end of that one there so just reading through it again are we talking to uh, to the o, uh, OBS zero we are um, assume we are for the moment we check out whether it is zero degrees and if it is just change it to three five nine and write that in else find out what it actually is take one off of it and write that into VOR1. If we're not talking to VOR1, if this is a one, we'll be talking to VOR2. So this is the next bit. Again, check it out. See if it's zero, if it is, set it there. Else, do that bit there, which is find out the value and take one off it and write it in. So let's update that script. And we'll see now if this is actually working. So again, we'll decrease, and that went past zero this time. And I'll do the same for VOR2, and that went past zero. Let's put it beyond zero. And put this one beyond zero. And we'll just rotate that down again. So make sure that goes past zero quite happily and do the same up here and make sure that goes past zero which it does okay so we're happy with that but yeah things here that seem so unnecessary now I want to do the increase version now in theory the increase version sh would normally be just changing that to a plus But we also have to reverse our test here if it gets as far as 359. Make it jump to zero. It does actually seem to go over um, the z zero in the positive direction, but I've no idea whether if we do a couple of rotations it's going to be uh, building up into multiples of 360 and cause problems. So we might as well have it setting, resetting itself to zero as we go over the zero mark. So that should be the version that we want for increasing it. So OBS increase, and we'll save that as a new function. And we shall allocate it. My increase. Turn the knob there, add that and then we'll watch what happens. So we'll turn it to the right and that one's increasing. It's going happily over the zero mark in both directions. So that's okay. And version two is doing the same. Now, it does take a lot of turning to get around all the way around the dial. So it might be a good idea to try and create a fast version. Again, we saw that the to legacy version of the fast one doesn't work anymore but let's try uh, doing one for the decrease 
so in the scripting area let's go with the decrease so what we're going to do is make it jump in um, set in fives I'll do the same with that one there so this is a, a new script being saved and we'll do the a, a fast increase as, as well and save as new so if you allocate that now Do the decrease one first, decrease fast. It's the same control here, but we're going to tell it um, a faster. I'm going to leave about 100 there and see what it what it does. And click OK on that, and we'll do the increase one fast as well. Oops, wrong one. My increase fast. That one turns to the right as a fast turn. Click add. And let's see what happens. I'm going to try turning it slowly increased first of all. And it's working on VOR2. Now let's turn it fast. And you can see it's doing much bigger jumps. And we do the decrease slowly and fast so we've got a bit of an accelerator in there I'm not sure what happens when you go fast over the north that seems to happen okay I go slowly over the north quickly over it Might take some getting used to. Let's go on to VOR1, just check that out. Fast increase, slow increase, fast decrease. Slowly over the north. Seems to work. Okay, so we can, I'm gonna give that a test flight and see if I like that. So that's the uh, VOR done. Uh, getting over some of the sort of changes that have happened and perhaps improving it with the fast and slow what's next for us well there is the gyro drift I, I'm, at, I'm a bit lazy I don't use it I've got that um, fault turned off but perhaps I should turn that one back on so again we'll do what we normally do we'll watch the events And this is another one where there is an, uh, an input event, but again, I really don't like the maths behind this. I'm guessing it's in radians and I don't know what it's jumping up by. I'm guessing it's a degree, because um, that's kind of the legacy version. So let's just see if there's a legacy version to make that work nicely. And there is a gyro uh, drift decrease. Um, now I put this on to bank B as far as this is concerned because I don't use it very often. So this is bank B for the gyro. And I want that to be the decrease. Bank B, gyro, turn that way. Click on add. And then we'll just do the same for the increase. I will just test that out so make sure I can see my gyro 
and it's increasing and decreasing at the moment it's working as it should be um, but I had that effect with the OBS as well when I tested it on the ground it was going correctly and it was just later in the flight that it went weird so we'll perhaps have a look at that and see if that works but I don't use it that often um, at the moment I tend to fly with the drift fault switched off so in terms of the cockpit so far ignored done 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 over here we have the parking brake done that's already allocated onto uh, my honeycomb throttle quadrant so the next one down here is the primer to look at i'm going to allocate that i'm just going to move my camera down a bit i'm going to allocate that to uh, no I'm not I'm going to allocate that to this push button here because really this is just a, a one-off event you pull it and it does a one pump for you so uh, this one should be relatively simple there is a primer uh, event an input event so we'll just um, I don't even need like a script for it, just going to allocate that straight away. So if we just search for primer, and we'll just check that the primer event works, we'll just click on add on that, allocate that to this on bank A, so it needs to be back in bank A. Bank B is only used really for these ones here. So primer click add and then we can just watch that if I press on the primer button here every time I press it it does a pump and that's all it needs to do so that's quite easy what else is there uh, there is right down the bottom here uh, this thing called the dome light let's clear this list and click on this one here and it's the um, lighting for the cabin and it's one when it's on and zero when it's off and again it's another input event so that should be relatively easy to program in which i said i'm going this is the one i'm going to put on to the first switch here this one here um because that's the first first switch there so we're sort of emulating that layout so let's go in here we're looking for the lighting cabin one let's see what we've got an input of it lighting cabin one the one after it means it's going to be the on version that one there means it's going to be on so this will be allocated to the switch in that direction click on add and we can see the switch has actually moved already so we're going to do the same again same filter lighting cabin apply the filter but this should be the zero event the off event in the opposite direction click on add and then we can watch that not happening so if I touch something weird button 21 this should be the ah yes I've touched the trim wheel with my hand as I've moved and let's do the off version now just check that one lighting cabin that one's secure so now it's working um, you do need to watch that occasionally that as you're moving your hand you can touch a throttle quadrant or you can touch the trim wheel and uh, allocate it to the wrong button so that's that's sorted now so continuing our kind of visual run around um, we've got this one here um, this one here does the glare shield if I turn the battery on 
here. I guess you can see the red glow on the screen brightening and darkening. It is actually a rotary that's happening here. So again, we need to watch the uh, events to see what on earth is happening with that. So ignoring the spam, rotating this. And it's doing the lighting glare shield going up in fives and down. So that's what we need to emulate. We need to have a look at a script to do that. Lighting glare shield one, that's the event, um, but we also want the variable for it, so we copy that much and when we put brackets around it, it becomes the variable. And they seem to have it going up in fives, so we'll put a five plus and this should be uh, the glare increase say that is new and the decrease will be a minus five save as new and allocate that it's going to be this one here on bank layer B so sorry this one here layer B it's one of the rarely used ones my glare decrease allocated A clear increase allocated and we'll just check that out now so if I turn this let's bring this more to the front we should see this animate and we should see this lighting change so I can see the knob appearing to turn and I can see the lighting going up and down now one of the things hidden behind there is the fact that when it starts off it's at zero and it does give another command it does um, toggle the glare light on so I'm going to allocate that as a push button here which is a legacy uh, command here a glare sh shield light toggle allocated to this so it must make sure we're on layer b for this one because it's all related to that glare light click add and what will happen now is when i press this button on the end it turns the whole glare sh shield on and off but i've still got control of the brightness so what's left here if we roll up in this direction here looking around um, the cockpit um, pretty much everything on this side here is now done what we've got left here is this little panel here where um, we've got some stacked rotaries here and this one here it says navcoms uh, navcom screens and it's this um, display here as we rotate this we can dim and brighten those lights and this one here uh, does the volume the, the crew volume I think it's ba it's sort of uh, so you can hear the marker beacons as you go over them the morse codes 
so let's have a go at the nav uh, com screens to start with so if we bring in axes and o's and do our usual thing of looking at the uh, simulator events as we turn the inner one the navcom screens let's ignore the spam it seems to be doing two things it does this uh, navcom dimming and it does also well that writes to here potential to four so we've got two ways of having a go at this to see if we can do it with that event and if we can't we'll uh, use the legacy one of potential to four so back to scripting and in that group there we're going to write um, the panel decrease So it was navcom dimming that we're after. Navcom dimming. I'm going to see if we can read that variable. So we're going to copy that much. And pasted in the front here and because it's the dimming version what we're going to do is to take we'll try taking one off of it just to start with and write it back into here now we can test that even before we um, to commit to it just by clicking the test button here and that seems to be dimming quite well Perhaps I need to dim a bit faster, so we might take five off of it. And we'll save that as new and turn it into the increase version. And we'll just make that a plus, save that as new, and we can allocate that straight away. panel decrease so it's this one here making sure they're in bank B decrease and increase and we'll just turn that and see lights are increasing and decreasing and we'll just have a look at the animation as well over here does it actually animate yep the inner knob is animating so that's nice um, the next one outside there is the volume the crew volume again we'll clear the list and just have a look at this one here and it's the same thing it's got this pilot volume there so we'll have a go with that now we have actually run out of rotaries so I'm going to use the slider for this one but let's create the script to start with so it's the panel volume audio panel well sorry uh, this pilot volume here that's I'm going to try and use this input event in the navcom section navcom pilot volume there it is <clears throat> so we do what we did before copy that paste it in put some brackets around it so it becomes a variable And we'll make things happen relatively quickly so we'll move it by five each time pop 
pilot volume increased because we put a plus on it. Save that as new. And decrease because we're taking five off of it. And this time instead I'm going to try and allocate it to that slider. Pilot volume decrease. So if I move this slider down, it's effectively the same as one of these rotaries um, turning to the left. But it obviously can't go infinitely, it reaches the stop at the bottom, but it's the same as turning that rotary to the left. So we'll add that in for the decrease, and now we'll do the increase. Now, I'm not 100% sold on that as an idea. It's a bit of a test, um, because, let's get this done. Being that I can't multitask, I can't speak at the same time, uh, let's increase that. As a sort of technique, we don't know, oh, I can't be sure, I'm gonna make sure it's in the middle to start with. Um, you can see that it's going up and down quite happily as I'm moving that. But I can't um, guarantee I'm gonna leave that in the middle. Um, if this starts by default at uh, full volume, and if I leave it at the bottom, I won't better turn it down or turn it up, but I'm not that bothered really because I don't use it very often this one but just for completeness and as an experiment I wanted to see what that slider did and the last one we've got over here is this sensitivity button let's uh, watch what happens with that let's clear that list the sensitivity button um, it's another input event which we can make a toggle out of because I've only got push buttons left to work with really um, I could make it a push button here or I've got plenty of unused buttons down here so I could put sensitivity onto this one here this one's unused at the moment let's do that let's, let's do because it, it looks a bit more like that so <clears throat> I'm going to use this one here So again, it's part of that NavCon group. Um, nav, it was a sensitivity. Here we are, NavCon audio marker sensitivity. And I'm gonna put it one when it's up there. and make it zero when it's down here. Click add. And we'll just see how that works. So at the moment it's in the, north, the low sensitivity, and that's in the high. It's sort of working the opposite way around, but it is default and option. Again, it's not a function I use very often, so I'm quite happy to have it there. You could write a toggle and add it to one of these buttons there if you wanted to, but I've got plenty of these switches available. So I'm happy with that. So let's have another quick look around the cockpit. We've got all those allocated. The dome light is the one that's in here as an option. Um, Pizzle heat is here, that should be Oh, but it's on a different template, but that will be there. Uh, those are on the different templates. All those are allocated. The carb heat, the axes are allocated on a different one. All of the um, uh, avionics are in place now. The ADF is in place. This is in place. Um, what's left for us to do is um, adjust 
one of my LED scripts that I've got it set at the moment so that if I run the LED script when I'm in megahertz or kilohertz mode it will either light up it will clear this ring or light up the ring to warn me which mode I'm in same with this one here I quite like the OBS to do that as well so that when I'm in a particular mode when I'm in um, nav 2 I want that ring to light up so if we go and have a look at where I had that script which was in my part of my radio script I'm going to be running that script anyway um, so I'm going to add it to there and because I'm talking to the ring on the outside it's going to be very similar in structure to this one here so if you haven't seen that previous video it might be worth having a look at it but I want it to look at that OBS toggle um, variable that was my called my OBS and if it's a zero switch all of the LEDs off on bowl number this is 9 10 11 12 so switch everything off in 12 if not if I'm looking in OBS 1 I want it to set to 27 which will turn all of those bulbs on so I'm going to update that script um, so you'll see it working when I've got um, the radio um, template loaded then you'll, you'll see that this is working and I'll um, put the whole thing together and have a test flight in a later video um, but that's I think enough for the moment so the next video the next thing that's left is to look at making this enunciator panel down here work for this aircraft okay so that's where we're going with the next video